Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. I want to introduce you to a marking gauge and show you some things you can do with it that you may not have thought possible. And I find that I use mine more and more and I have three, four of them. And typically I'm working on something, I'll have three of them on the go. Here's the first thing that you typically do. If you're cutting dovetails, you use the marking gauge to determine how far down each piece you need to saw. The way I like to do it, which I find the most accurate, is to set one piece on top of the other. Set your marking gauge on there, let the cutter fall down, lock it in position. Now that represents the exact thickness of that piece. Then you go in, you can scribe your line, and you want a marking gauge that gives you a nice, clean, severed line. Always best to test it in something soft. Softwood will crush before it'll cut unless the blade is really sharp. I always like to roll the edges as opposed to pulling it across because you have very little reference surface out there. You can go very light if you're working on the face and you don't want to have a marking gauge line or you can actually go in and pencil in your dovetail. I'll show you what I mean. Save your face line for last. Go in, pencil in where your dovetails are going to be. Mark the other side. Obviously I would be a little more accurate with this if I was actually doing it for real. And then you can go in and you could just scribe at the base of the pins so that you don't have to worry about any gauge lines at all. And the nice thing about the wheel style is you can go in and if you need to get a little bit closer you can just roll it as opposed to the old style where once you set it down the beam hid the pin and you had no idea where you were. It was a lot of guesswork. That's why I like this style. Something else you can do with it. You're cutting a mortise and tenon. <coughs> and on the mortise portion, you want to have your depth correct. If you don't, then you're either having to shorten your tenon or you try to put it together and it doesn't seat properly. So, providing your mortise is wide enough, you can take your gauge, marking gauge, set it for whatever the length of your tenon would be. I don't have one here to show you, but my tenon was 7 eighths of an inch long. I'd set this for 7 eighths. Then you can set that down inside and you can simply move it side to side and that will clean off any bumps that may be down there. If there's a lot of work you may have to go back in with your chisel but if it's just a matter of getting a little getting rid of a little bit you can go in there and remove it and that at least will show you where your high spots were and then I've got to go in and remove a little bit from the corner but it makes a great tool for that. Something you could also do with a router plane but you may not have one. If you're cutting a rabbit and you just want to go in and clean that up, again, a router plane, but if you don't have a router plane, you can use your marking gauge and you can go in there. If I needed to make that just a little bit bigger, I just pull that cutter out just a little bit more. Now I can go in there and referencing off of this face, I can go in and you may want to make multiple passes. And grain direction is going to be an issue as well. And as I said, just like a, uh, just like you would use a router plane if you had one, you can go in there with your marking gauge, and it'll double as one. All right, now in order for that to work couple things have to be done right. Number one, the, you, the screw that holds the cutter on has to be sitting down below the face of the cutter. Number two, the face of the cutter needs to be flat. So if you're looking at your cutter like this, this surface has to be nice and flat. If it's rounded over at all, that none of these features I just showed you would be able to work. And of course you want it nice and sharp. And sharp means that you have your bevel on the inside and then you've got your flat out here. And sometimes you'll find your cutters, if you look at it under some magnification, it's actually there's a little flat right there. And in order to get this sharp, you've got to move this flat face back to this point back here. Now if there's a little bit of material, you can do it on the stones. If there's a lot, I'll show you how I do it. And then we'll go back and we'll finish on the stone. So I'm going to take this one, take the rod out. <coughs> and I'm going to put in a uh, brand new cutter with a, uh, 
Now that screw doesn't quite fit down in there. So the first thing I'm going to do is put this in my drill. I think the, I think the uh, overall width right here at the maximum part of that screw is a little bit too wide. So I'm gonna go to my grinder. Carefully, just shorten that a little bit, make it a little narrower. Narrower wasn't the word, smaller diameter. Okay, that now that fits in that little recess. So I'll put this back together. Now this cutter is actually threaded. Need a pair of pliers. Make sure that's good and tight. And put this on the end of the cutter or the end of the rod. Now that is sticking up just a little bit high so I've got to fix that and I want to sharpen this. <clears throat> so I'll meet you over at my disc sander and I'll show you how I do it. Now if you're fortunate enough to have a disc sander this is a slick way of doing it. First thing I want to do is make sure that this is square. It's not quite so I'll go in there and adjust that. Now, I took a piece of wood and I cut a groove across there that's perpendicular to the length of this piece. I'm going to go on there and referencing off of the face of the wheel. What am I doing? Mm -hmm. Wrong way. Wrong way. In fact, I got to run out like this. Put that right there this in place. That will check that. Now with this set up, I'll set it down in that groove. I can feel with my finger that that edge is really sharp and you'll be able to tell if it wasn't when you first started. Now it's not, I can see some brown right there so I haven't touched it all the way around. I'm going to go back in here. you over at the stones and I'll show you how we finish it up. I used two different stones. On my right I have a 16,000 grit Shapton and in my left hand I have a trend diamond plate. I use the 300 grit side of the diamond plate to keep my stone flat and then put a little bit of the stuff I'm using in there is actually called home rate which helps inhibit rust because this will rust. Now I'm going to set that down on its face and just little circles, light pressure and because it's tall it can be a little bit uh, unbalanced so that's why I prefer to do little circles as opposed to running up and down. And I, every once in a while I'll stop and change my position just so that in case I'm wearing more heavily on one side than the other the wear will even out depending on how coarse it was coming off of this disc sander. That will determine how much work this is going to take. But it usually doesn't take very long. Another couple of minutes, seconds. 
nice thing about the diamond stone it cuts quickly now the surface area on this little cutter is small enough that without worrying about it I'm just going to jump all the way up here to the 16,000 now this stone being ceramic it's going to wear with use so I just keep moving around so as not to create a low spot in one place that's all it should take now clean that off and just before I put it back together I want to make sure that that screw head is sitting down below the surface now you can see a nice shine on that so it's good and sharp I'm going to take this over to my grinder, Dave. Just grind that face down a little bit just so that it sits lower than the cutter. Could be warm. Yeah, it is. And the uh, the Allen screw hole is deep enough that you don't have to worry about running out of <coughs> space. A little easier to do this if you lock it in place in the gauge. Now I don't feel any burr left on the back side so that's typical if these things are hardened. If there was any there it can it'll wear off with use anyway. snug that up and I can see a little ridge right there so I know that the head of that uh, screw is sitting lower than the flat surface of the cutter and we'll try that out on a piece of pine well I can even hear it nice lovely cut crisp yeah now you don't you start cutting dovetails you'll really appreciate it when you drag your chisel across that line and it drops down in there and there's no second guessing as to where it's supposed to be sitting now one last thing i want to show you with this you can buy larger diameter cutters and i prefer a fairly small diameter not much bigger than the shaft itself and what that does is it helps to limit how deep that cutter is going to go in so when you're using that it's only going to allow it to go as deep as the difference between the diameter of the outside of the edge the cutting edge and the diameter of the shaft which is ideal for dovetails there are sometimes applications where you're going to want greater depth for instance when you were cutting that rabbit I just did one recently in plywood and I had to cut a rabbit all around this back and I wanted to be able to go down in there and make it a nice deep shoulder line so what I did is I just switched out the cutters and put this one on which gave me you can see the difference in size an extra you know, maybe an extra 330 seconds of an inch but it was perfect for what I needed and you would go through and sharpen that in the exact same way they're not that expensive nice to have something like that around you can even get larger diameter wheels than that which have their application anyway I would suggest you have more than one marking gauge for the simple reason that when you're doing various operations it's nice to be able to have for instance when I was doing this as I was getting this rabbit prepared I wanted to keep cleaning up this shoulder line and then being able to also come in with the, the uh, marking gauge upside down and keep moving this surface down into that corner so it pays to have a couple of them anyway I hope you enjoyed that see ya